in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 26 and 27. It talks about uh, the same thing and about how unconfessed and unprocessed resentment or bitterness or anger actually gives Satan placement and power in your life. Listen to what it says. It says, therefore, let each of you put off falsehood and speak truthfully to his neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. See the picture? There's an elephant in the room, okay? And it gets larger by the hour when that elephant is not acknowledged, dealt with, and eliminated from human relationships. And that elephant's called anger. Any form, the Bible says, of unresolved anger in your life puts like a, a neon vacancy for Satan sign on the marquee hanging over your life. And like me, you might be tempted to say right now as I'm talking, uh, I don't have a problem with anger, Kenny. Uh, fair enough. The problem, however, is that anger is simply the baseline emotion behind many expressions of anger. Think about some of these. How about irritation? How about aggravation? How about agitation? or just being annoyed or exasperated or frustrated? Or maybe on the other end, how about rage or hostility or bitterness or resentment or scorn or vengefulness, okay? Contempt and envy and jealousy and coveting are also in the anger bucket. So what I want you to see is that any form of anger not being dealt with openly and honestly and productively is by default being given over to Satan to use as a foothold or base for his operations in your life. Now, we're given the freedom to be angry, but we're also being charged with dealing with it responsibly, okay? Just remember this, anger, that's inevitable, but destruction is optional, okay? Angry men in the, in the spiritual battle, they make really useless soldiers in the fight against evil, why? because they've already been hijacked. Now, another passage in the Bible that talks about emotional hijacking is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. If you have a Bible, I want you to turn there. And it talks about how out-of-control emotions blind you to Satan's presence. Listen to what it says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Here's the key part. Casting all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Now, here's the backdrop on this passage. Peter is talking to a group of guys going through a very emotionally turbulent time, and he does not want them to get hijacked by their emotions in the midst of suffering. He wants them to stand firm. Why? Because if they do give in to their emotions, Satan's going to have them for lunch. And so his encouragements uh, from, from one God's man to another are really simple. Number one, put yourself under God's authority. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand. Okay? Two, relieve that pressure that you feel inside by talking to God about the pressure. Cast your anxiety upon him. So... Put yourself under God's authority, relieve the pressure by talking to God about how you feel. And then number three, raise your threat level to red, okay? There's an enemy that wants to take you down. If you don't, put yourself under God's authority and start talking to God about how you're feeling, all right? So what happens if I don't do that, Kenny? Well, here's what's going to happen. If you don't give your inner struggles to God, you become in what we see in the animal kingdom as slow-moving prey. All right, the Bible says to cast your inner struggles on God versus what? Versus cover them up. The Bible says to bring your inner struggles to God instead of letting them build up, okay? Why? Because then you take Satan's leverage away, okay? Like anger, anxiety in this passage has a bunch of cousins. So if you're tempted to say, well, I don't struggle with worry or anxiety, okay? Uh, you can see it better manifested and expressed in some of these behaviors. How about fear? How about nervousness? 
How about tenseness? How about uneasiness? How about apprehension? How about worry or distress or just kind of this dread feeling? You see, anxiety is just a baseline emotions that has a lot of different expressions. And the Bible says that you're supposed to cast any destabilizing emotion that's inside of you onto God, and then you'll avoid getting hijacked 